For Krema Media's policy, I'm Sane Lamini. Ambassador and activist Lindiwe Mabuza joins me to discuss her book titled Tambole Nyoga. So you spent many years in the anti-apartheid struggle. Can you briefly tell us about your life and role in the anti-apartheid movement? Well, I spent many years in America mm -hmm. where I started talking about the evils of apartheid mm -hmm. uh, as a student mm -hmm. in 1964. All my student years were engaged besides studying, teaching Americans wherever I found them. Mm -hmm. Uh, about what our people were going through under apartheid. Mm -hmm. And then I also taught school in the United States. I taught at uh, Ohio University. Oh. I even drew up a syllabus teaching about apartheid, the, mm -hmm. the literature of South Africa, South African black literature, mm -hmm. the, the history of South Africa, comparative studies of injustice, South Africa and America. Uh, every time mm -hmm. I woke up in the morning thinking anti-apartheid. Wow. That's before I actually formally joined the ANC in 1975. Mm -hmm. I was doing it already. And then in 1977, decided, well, I decided earlier to go to Lusaka mm -hmm. to be full-time activist of the ANC. And then when I went to Sweden in 1979, what do you do when you mobilize people you are teaching? I actually literally went to classes all over Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Finland, Iceland mm -hmm. to teach about apartheid. Sometimes, sometimes through literature, mm -hmm. other times in mathematics classes, mm -hmm. the mathematics of apartheid. The book Tambole Nyoga is written about Oliver Tambo and it focuses on his friendship with uh, South African President Thabo Mbeki as well as former Swedish Prime Minister Olof Palme. Tell us about their relationship. It's a beautiful relationship. It's, he's at the center of the two. One is his brother. He called Olof Palme my brother. His comrade, his, his uh, uh, fellow combatant because he said we're in the same struggle but different trenches of the same struggle. And on the other side is his son literally grew up under the tutelage of Tambo, that is uh, uh, President Mbeki, and he was a fellow freedom fighter with him, but he was also his emissaries, the person that he was sending back and forth between himself and all of Pan and himself in Sweden. A lot of South Africans might not be familiar with Olof Palme. Can you briefly tell us about his role and the role of Sweden in the anti-apartheid struggle? I think without Olof Palme, all the liberated countries of Southern Africa will probably have had a difficult time getting funding. Zimbabwe, Angola, Mozambique, Guinea-Bissau, Namibia, and ourselves. Mm -hmm. Our people don't understand how much Sweden and the whole of Scandinavia actually contributed to the liberation that we now take for granted mm -hmm. and the democracy we tend to abuse. People sacrificed, children were collecting funds to give to the ANC mm -hmm. as they did for Namibia. Mm -hmm. Olof Palme was great in that. He didn't, he was in the West, but not of the West. He just looked at what the liberation movements wanted and took it from there and got his people and his government to fund the needs of the liberation movement. He didn't prescribe for us how we should wage our struggle. He never told us not to use arms, although he didn't gave us arms, but it's nothing that he didn't give us arms if he gave the soldiers food, soap, toothpaste, the wherewithal a person, a human being's dignity is actually uh, observed and is realized. He was doing everything that we needed him to do. More than that, he actually was the person that influenced other governments to follow suit. Mm. 
At first, Sweden was the only country that was saying, let's boycott South Africa. But in the end, the whole world was saying the same thing. It took time. It took a long time. But in the end, the, one of the biggest conferences, the last conference he attended, and Oliver Tambo attended, and the president of SWAPO at the time, Sam Nijoma attended, was called the Swedish People's Parliament Against the Apartheid, where all the organizations of Sweden were together in one room saying support to apartheid must end completely. And all of Palmer at that conference made the statement apartheid cannot be reformed, it must be abolished. Which was critical, critical in 1986. And he was about to go to the United Nations Security Council to ask the United Nations Security Council to have a mandatory, uh, m to impose mandatory sanctions on South Africa, as they had done in 1977 when the UN Security Council voted unanimously for sanctions, military sanctions against South Africa. Never mind that other people in the world, other governments continue to help South Africa, but there was that resolution. But Sweden was the spirit behind a lot of the changes that were happening in Western Europe regarding our struggle. Why Tambolen Yoga? What inspired the title to your book? Because it's his clan name. Oh. It's like Madiba is Nelson Mandela's clan name. Okay. His, 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 part of his poem says, Tambolen Yoga, Elisababal Zundai. Mabele Made, Ungelisumtuananga, Pesha Wumfula, something like that. So I just thought this Tambole Nyoga is. Is the book in any way aimed at helping the leaders of today to better understand why OR is one of the greatest leaders of our times? You know, maybe I'm biased. He is not one of the greatest, he is the greatest leader. South Africa has held. He came out of the country with one suitcase in his family. He came back to the country with the entire world supporting us because he mobilized populations throughout the world. I should know we worked very hard under his guidance to turn things around. Uh, I don't think he had any moment in his life when he was not thinking about the people of South Africa. I don't think there was any moment when he woke up dreaming something else. It was execution of the struggle. And to summarize how his mind worked, he said, we shall overthrow apartheid when four pillars converge. The four pillars were mass mobilization of the people of South Africa inside the country, the work of the underground people all over the country, in all sectors of society, the work of the military wing of the ANC, the hammering blows of MK, and international mobilization. And you know that when we came to adopting the Harare Declaration in 1989. Those four pillars had converged. The country was burning. The world was mobilized against the party. Uh, you saw it when Mandela came out in 1990. Those throngs were part of the spirit that OR had instigated in the world, had turned people into agents of South Africa. Populations around the world were ambassadors of our people. And it was work, the work of OR. I mean, sometimes, because OR, like Mandela, like Sisulu, were banned, you couldn't read about his operations around the world. You couldn't understand what he was doing. And with Mandela, he came out and the population saw him.
but he was the fruit of the work of the liberation struggle inside and outside the country. The, the release of the political prisoners didn't just happen. The political prisoners were asked by Tambo, how do you want us to present your, your case to the world? It's the, it's the political prisoners who said, use Matiba Mandela. He must be the symbol. OR went around the world. When they were offering him awards, he would say, no, thank you, not now, not for me. Let's give it to Mandela. Release Nelson Mandela and all the political prisoners. That was, that was the focus of Oliver Tam. I know I was in India one time with him when they wanted to give him uh, the Nehru Award. And he politely thanked them for, for offering, mm -hmm. but he said, please, it should go to Nelson Mandela. I was there, so I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. A man who was so selfless, so completely dedicated to the freeing of all people, gave up his family, his good life in London, mm -hmm. to be closer to the people, closer to the struggle, mm -hmm. and lived in Africa, in Lusaga first in Tanzania and then in Lusaka. But that's just the kind of spirit he uh, had. Mm -hmm. And those who worked under him, like President Tabumbeke, know what is expected of them. And lastly, what else do you hope that the readers will take from your book? No, Oliver Tambo. Please, no, Oliver Tambo. Uh, knowing him and celebrating him every day of your life mm -hmm. and understanding that he is the father of our democracy. He is the father of South Africa's democracy. Mm -hmm. And to know him is also to work hard, especially the youth, mm -hmm. because he did it all for your sake. And the future is yours, the young people of this country. I know some think, well, ANC and Tambo, those are the old-fashioned guys. We have new ideas. I would like to see those new ideas outside of what Tambo has already prescribed for us, to work every day to free ourselves from the indignities of the past and the present to free ourselves from myopic ideas we might have about what, what the country can do for you. As Kennedy said, President of the United States in the 1960s, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. I think that's a lesson that our children should have to take because that's what Oliver Tambo instilled in all of us. Every day, what can I do to push the movement forward? What can I do to change the situation, the thinking of people? That was Ambassador Lindy Mabuza speaking to Polity about her book titled Tambo Lenyoka.